I started experiencing same-sex attraction probably around 11 or 12. Because I had grown up in a culturally Christian household, I knew that that was something that was wrong. So I turned to the Bible, right? Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to turn to the Bible. And I remember looking at homosexuality in the subject index and turning to the verses. And there being a list of, of people who will never inherit the kingdom of God amongst them like liars, thieves. But then the one I focused on uh, was the homosexuals. And that being the moment that cemented for me that I was going to hell. And being just so terrified of that. I prayed every night that I would wake up and be straight. I, tr I prayed that it would just go away, that maybe I would grow out of it. I wondered that, whether or not um, this is just who I was and whether God really loved me. When I, ex I accepted that I was destined for hell, well, it was like, well, I might as well earn it. And I started living my life as an openly gay person. That was my life for 20, about 20 years. Five years ago, I met someone at work who was studying you know, to be a pastor. I got to know him as a person. Um, when he left our job to go to ministry full time, I kept in contact with him. In the spring of 2019, I ran into him again in person. We were talking and he was telling me about what he was up to. He invited me to go to um, Palm Sunday services. And I really had no intention of going, but I said yes anyway, because you know he was a friend and I didn't want to be rude. I leave the encounter, continue my journey on my way home, run into him again and he reminds me. He reaches out to me that same week later on Facebook to make sure I, you know, I know my way there. I wake up that Sunday telling myself I'm not going. There's nothing out of church for me. I already know where I stand with God. But then I reminded myself that, um, that I told my friend I would go until I found myself outside of the building where Woodside Detroit um, was being housed at the time, contemplating whether or not I was really going to go in. And I encountered one of the greeters who came out and greeted me with an umbrella because it was raining and offered to walk me to the door. And so I went in. I had a bag with me at that time and I remember holding it to my chest and clutching it as like a shield. And um, one of the uh, worship leaders, she starts singing, come to the river. And I remember you, at that moment, I could feel something happen, something stir inside of me. It was like God had started chipping away at the armor that I had put up. And then the message starts. I can't tell you anything that he said other than this. He looks in my direction and says, Jesus loves you. And for the first time in my life, I believe that. And it was in that moment that I realized that I had something missing in my life and that I'd found it. I spent the next six months or so uh, going to uh, services, trying to learn about who God is, who Jesus is. So in that time, I'm exploring the Bible, reading about the ministries of Jesus, observing how he interacted with people. Uh, one of the interactions I think that touched me the most was um, his interaction with the, the woman at the well. You see that he sees to the heart of this woman, who is a sinner, who is a woman living in adultery, and he still takes the time to get to know her. He takes the time to talk to her. He takes the time to show her who he is and extends to her grace, and you see her transformed. The closer people come in contact with Jesus, the more their lives are transformed. I wanted that for myself. I wanted a life where I didn't have to hate myself. I wanted a life where I didn't have to live in darkness, a life where I could have hope. And it became more and more clear to me during that time that that hope is Jesus. I'm at a point now where I have to make a choice and the Holy Spirit convicts me in that. And I pull out my phone and I start deleting my dating apps. And I'm like, okay, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't continue on. I want to pursue my relationship with Jesus. I can't pursue, you know, living a homosexual lifestyle. I can't, that's not who I can be anymore. And so I delete all my dating apps. I'm like, God, I want to belong to you. Please make me yours. It's just over and over and over and over again. It's in that moment that I truly give my life to Christ. As I continue along this, this journey of building faith, my desire for God, my desire for Jesus has increased. And my desire to pursue my flesh has decreased. One of the most important things for all of us to know is that there is no limit put on who we should be uh, preaching the gospel to. 
I have felt that call from God to step out of the secular world and, and, and press into vocational ministry, specifically to people who are uh, who are in the LGBTQ community, who are desiring that close relationship with God, but don't think they can have that. And on the other side of that, also to come alongside people in the church who uh, don't know how to minister to people like me. If someone asks me today how I identify, I identify as a Christian. I don't identify as being gay. I am a Christian who has a, uh, a sin struggle with same-sex attraction, but that sin struggle does not define my identity. My identity is defined by Jesus and by my association with Him.